Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Daily Profile. I'm Corbs. This is an after trading video. We do it every day around here ish, Monday through Thursday, where we jump into the charts and we take a look at what exactly had happened in the markets. I hope everybody's having a great day. Coming at you a little bit late, not going to lie. Today got away from me. This isn't the normal time where we stream or we do the pre recorded videos, but if anybody out there is burning some midnight oil and you're still on the stream, I hope you can join me for today's daily profile show. Also, as a heads up, this will be the last pre-recorded video. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to speak it over us. I'll keep a finger crossed as well. The last pre-recorded video of the year. I'll be traveling over the weekend, and I'll be posting up in Mexico City, where allegedly the internet gods have been smiling on that region of the world, and we're going to be dealing with some lightning fast speeds that are able to handle the bandwidth. We'll be back. We'll be streaming live together. The chat box will be full. There will be smiles on my heart as well as on my face. I look very much forward to being back live with you all. If you are returning to this as a regular watcher of the Daily Profile Show, a big welcome to you. Uh, thanks for being here. I always enjoy seeing you. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon, as close to in person as we probably will ever come. If this is your first time jumping on or watching, uh, watching us, a big welcome. I hope you plan on sticking around. It's a good spot to come after the trading day. We decompress a little bit. We talk about the good. We talk about the bad. Trader, trader talk, buy traders, for traders. We got a lot to talk about today. We got plenty of time to do it. I am at a point in my life today where I feel spent, like butter stretched over too much bread, as one of my good Hobbit friends would say. So let's go ahead and jump into the action and see what exactly is going on. A nod to the chat box where we used to chat. You guys can just do that in the comments now. As a side note, I've been very bad at checking the comments. Don't let that stop you. Don't let that discourage you. The fact that you might have said something I didn't reply, don't let that stop you from doing it again. Just forgive me. Okay, we're looking at the S&P 500 right now because what else is there to look at? I say that, but today's one of those days. It sets me thinking, hey, maybe there is something better to be looking at. Let's talk about what's going on. We're going to walk through some of this action. We're going to talk about some of my trades. I'm going to give you some thoughts here. I'd like to preface what we're about to see right now, maybe a trigger warning if it needs to be said. But what the action is shaping up to be, what the market is doing right now, it's unreasonable. Nobody said trading had to be easy. Nobody said that the market needs to cater to our wants and our needs. But as I look around at what's going on and the way that it's happening, I'll tell you, it's just unreasonable. Let's talk about it. Let's take a look at what's going on. The S&P opened up inside of the gap today. We chopped around initially after uh, you know we had this big gap zone behind us. We held above the open. We started to break down that open, dropped in dramatic fashion to fill in the gap below us. We ended up finding some support, at least temporarily from there. We bounced all the way back to retest the open from there. Uh, we couldn't get through. Came all the way down to revisit, putting in a new low of day, taking out that initial balance low, hanging around those lows for a while before finding some support once again. We ended up going coast to coast inside of value, coast to coast for the range of the day. We broke through the open, headed for higher prices, and currently in the mid to high 70s coming into the close right now. Uh, just shy of getting us up into the 40 80s at the moment, but the market is still moving, so who knows? We might hit the 80s. Okay, let's go ahead and drill back to the open now that we have the, the full story of what exactly had happened in the market. And let me talk to you about my, my main thoughts coming into this session. The main thoughts I had was just turning down for what? Everything I was seeing was up, and I felt there was a lot of a lot to back up the idea that this was going to go higher today. The fact that we opened up inside of a gap uh, on our prep calls, and my primary call, idea coming into this was that we had the potential to go for some type of a gap and go situation. The market opens up in the gap, gives little to nothing to the downside, and we just start heading in the direction of that gap we created. Ultimately, pushing us into the, the 80s, pushing us into the 90s. Heck, why stop there? Maybe we're even going to 4100 today. Maybe a little bit ambitious, but at least getting us up into the 80s, that was my idea. Now, I was fully prepared that we would be dealing with potential for a gap and go. So we talked about this on our prep, that if the market opened up and started showing signs that we would be taking off, I wanted to be aggressive about hitting the longs and getting on board. Because potentially, if this does gap and go, there might not be good opportunities to get on board. Likely, if that happens, we're going to be taking off and we're not coming back. So need to get on early or there won't be anything else to do. We're just going to have to sit and watch this get into the, the 80s. The downside of that type of a, approach is 
if that starts to shape up, we have very little information to support it at the time it's happening. So in that situation, when we have to pull the trigger, there's little to back up the idea that we're right, and then we have to just let that idea fail or let that idea work out. The other dynamic is we don't want to be too quick about taking profits because this is expected to go in this idea if it's working out. And we want to be able to ride that up as far as we can. So that was my idea coming into this. Now, there's a few things that I was really interested in as far as areas to lean against and to trade off of. We had the overnight high at the 63.50. That was of primary importance to me, especially the way that we opened. We immediately pushed through that overnight high. Uh, very strong, looking like, hey, right from the rip, this dipped down slightly, pushed off. We're seeing it. We're seeing the gap and go. Let's get long, and then we're just going to hold this long and strong and laugh all the way to the bank. That was the original idea. Okay, and The benefit of hindsight, the joke's on me. There's no laughing. It's a very serious matter. So let's talk about what happened. The S&P opened up. We pulled back to the, open, or to the overnight high. I hit the long. We dipped slightly below the overnight high and then came back. Perfect. Increased the size on this long. Then we started to fail. After pushing higher, we started to fail below the uh, that overnight high. Exited the trade. We came back to the open, defended it. Couldn't get through the open. Went right back to pop back outside the overnight range. Hitting those longs again. We held, increased the size. Ready to go long and strong with this position. We dip below the, op the overnight high again, and I hit the exit. Now, the thing I was very careful about was if we were going to be pushing outside that overnight high, if we could not hold outside the overnight range, we had that huge gap below us. First of all, something would have been wrong with my idea. If we were going, this was supposed to be going. And if we were not going to be going, and if we were going to be revisiting any of these lower prices, there was a huge gap zone below us. The market has been abnormally volatile. The likelihood of what actually ended up happening, the fact that we just crushed down to that filling in the gap, that was likely. And I didn't want to sit there and be holding and, and have some kind of a massive move like this go against me. Yeah? So I was very cautious. As soon as this wasn't working, just took it off. This old rascal sets it up again after being unable to get below the open. We then push through the overnight high for a third time. I put the trade on. We come back and test it. I increase the size. And we just drop. At this point, we don't ever get back above the open. Or the, excuse me. The overnight high, yeah? We don't ever get back above it. And we break through the open. We can't get to it. And then we just drop dramatically to fill in this gap zone that is below us, yeah? I just sit there and watch this happen. There was nothing really that I could plan for as a trade idea. The idea that this was moving lower uh, was something that just did not make sense to me. And ultimately, we ended up revisiting those higher prices and pushing us into just shy of the 80s. But instead of doing that, we instead first spent the majority part of the day ripping to the downside. Back to what I said earlier. Unreasonable that we were going to end higher today and that we did this first. I'm okay with a little to the downside. I'm okay with a half gap fill. Heck, maybe even a gap fill if we're talking about getting really crazy. But the way that this dropped down, crushed through all of this, held those lower prices, took out the initial balance low. What's a boy to do? What is a boy to do? The S&P worked me over. This seems to be the general theme of my morning sessions recently. These morning sessions have been very brutal. Uh, and what's more, similar to yesterday, the general idea shaping up at some point, but before it shapes up, it just absolutely loses its mind doing something else. And in some cases, I feel like I'm not even looking at the S&P right now. The, the S&P that has a, a place in my heart, that is my sweet baby love, my ride or die, I feel like this is a stranger. I don't even feel like I know this product right now. Because of how it is moving and the way things are shaping up, it's an actual mystery to me. I'd be interested to know if you guys are feeling the same way right now, but uh, I watch this drilled in action so much, and it feels like I'm looking at something that is not the S&P right now. But it is the S&P right now. This is partly my struggle. Throughout this, though, I ended up starting the day very quickly down a lot. Because not only did I take these trades, I increased the size and I was going aggressively with it. 
immediately regretted that decision, but this was my decision. And I stand by this. And it's almost, I can't help but laugh a little bit. Not that this is funny, but to, to see the market just do me dirty like this. And I'm not a fan of blaming forces outside of our control. But we should recognize that sometimes we just get dealt that we just get dealt a shitty hand. Yeah? This was a shitty hand. If any there's so many variations of what could have happened at this high of day, at this high of the morning, at the open, that would have resulted in everything being fine for me. Really the 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 worst possible thing that could have happened is what happened. We open up and instead of initially ripping higher, we start dropping lower. I'm chill, I'm not taking those long, uh, not joining the shorts, but you know, at least I'm not in that situation. We open up and we just start working out and take us into the 80s. I'm having an insane morning. Or it just shapes up, starts, fails, and then just goes about our business. The fact that we reset this up three different times, all three times taking full losses on increased size, I mean, what's a boy to do? What is a boy to do? Absolutely brutal. Just uh, bent me over and took me to the cleaners of sorts. So that's what happened for the day, uh, for the morning, should I say. Later in the day, we found some basing. This was at the time value area low. This was also the high, kind of that gap close area. Uh, so it looked like this was holding and finding some support. I initiated a, a smaller position long, looking for this to return to take out higher prices and even resume the original idea I was talking about. Got dipped out of this before we held and then ripped higher. Uh, brutal, absolutely brutal. The market giving me really no mercy today. Later in the session, um, a little bit later after that, we pushed through a nice LVN, initiated along, took that LVN up to the open, hit the exit. Was fully expecting that if we got back to the open, this was going to push through the open. And at that point, would have been jumping on to reinitiate a long position again. And that never happened. We ended up not being able to get through the open and uh, not being able to, to break and hold those higher prices. And then once again, we just moved lower. Contextually, there was nothing about the downside that made sense. I couldn't get on board with an idea to the downside. Um, even if maybe a certain level is holding and it looks like we're going lower, if I don't have a trade idea of why that makes sense or what I'm expecting, I just can't participate. So I didn't participate. Ended up sitting on this for a little while. Then I put on what probably seems like a uh, 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 very noisy amount of trades going into the later part of the morning session here, kind of the early afternoon. This is one of the reasons why we didn't have the daily profile show this afternoon. Boy was busy doing the whole dig myself out bit. Not a great bit. So what happened here is I put on um, a series of longs. And what I was looking at as the this at this point is not that big of a surprise, the market's being unreasonable. Because it is. It's being very unreasonable. But we should at some level be expecting this because this is how the whole week has been. And so I was still looking at this as we just squeezed in an unreasonable way to the downside before we were going to come back and head towards higher prices. And so I put on a series of longs that every time I got long, as soon as we pushed into something high and had any type of issue, I just got out, full out. Because this was being so difficult to the upside, uh, I just was very focused on locking in. As soon as we rotated down and nothing changed, I Took the trade again, go back up, take it off, go back up, take it off. And I just put on this series of longs as we were working our way up uh, and really traded a ton today. Now, with all of that noise and all that smoke that the S&P gave me, ending out the session $75 up. Uh, all of that effort was to dig myself out of this hole. And I'll tell you, it was a brutal clawing out. This entire session was just... It was just ridiculous. This was got to be the hardest $75 I've ever made in my life. This $75 is not including fees and commissions, so there's a very good chance I'm probably down on the day, slightly. Um, but I will say this. Coming back from that original, uh, those original losses, it was a big deal. And recouping that was a, something to, to be glad that it happened about really eloquently said, Corb, great job.
Okay, let me talk to you about a few things, though. Let me just pretend you guys are here in the chat box with me. You guys can tell me what you think about this. A couple things to think about, yeah? We have to make decisions as traders, okay? Putting this together, the idea that we were going for that gap and go, I thought was a valid idea. The damn thing said no, okay? It's one of those situations this morning where this finds that move that we actually ended up getting, but it happens early in the day, maybe like I was expecting. Um, the risk-to-reward is insane. I would have been up massively, and it would have been my biggest trading probably day of the year because I was very committed to the fact of holding that to the 80s. I was very committed to if this started working, I didn't want to get out. I wanted to be able to hold that all the way through. That was the idea, and I, was, I came in with that as a game plan. The market gave it to me. It started shaping it up. I knew with taking that trade the way that I was planning on taking it that it was very likely that I was going to get caught up. A very likely potential that before uh, I wouldn't have a lot of information and potentially I was going to be wrong. But the risk to reward made so much sense. And if I was right about this, you know, there wasn't going to be another time to get on board. So this was a thing. So what I'm trying to say here is I came in with a game plan. I executed the game plan. I was planning on being aggressive. I was planning on getting in early. All of that was planned ahead of time. The market seemingly started to shape that up for me. And so I took it. And it didn't work. It absolutely just didn't work. It failed. And I took those losses. I say that to say that there was a point to that, I think, where I was going. I think as I started saying it, I was reflecting on how brutal this action was. It hurt my heart. I lost my train of thought as I got sad. But let me just say, I think where I was going with that was uh, we come up with our trade ideas. We stick to those ideas. And that's a job well done. Even if the market gives us something that we didn't expect, even if the market gives us a shitty hand, okay, that's one of those things we can't control, but we can control what we do. And a, a bad way to judge how good we did is what the result ended up being. Because in hindsight, I saw that it chopped around like crazy before it dropped. In real time, I could never have known that that was what was happening. And if that trade idea that I had played out and I made thousands of dollars on that single trade. Yeah. I can't let that make me think I did the right thing and make me feel that I'm smart. And then I can't let the situation that it failed, and it failed in a really inconvenient way, beat me up and make me think that I'm stupid. Like, we can't let the market, what it does, take us to those extremes. These are things we cannot control. I could not control that the market shaped up that way today. Um, but there are things we control. We have to lean on those things that we can control. And we got to stick to our ideas, I think, is the other thing I meant to say. This is going to be a long video, and I'm starting to ramble. So we should go ahead and shut this down. I feel like I had a bit of a better point that is now lost on me as I continue to talk. On that high note that we're on, why don't we just end it here? Listen, today's Thursday, so there won't be any other streams or videos for the rest of this week. If you guys are going to be on the streams tomorrow, I wish you very happy trading. Good luck. Be very careful out there. It's uh, brutal. Let's all hit the like button on the way out, and I'm going to see you guys bright and early on Monday, I believe. Tuesday for sure. If not Tuesday, Wednesday, no doubt. Thursday on God, we're going to have a live stream. Um, Next week, for sure, we should be having our live stream, yeah? Until then, I miss you guys already. If you're still here at the very end, big welcome to you. Leave me a comment. If I don't respond, and if I don't see it, don't let that stop you. Go ahead and do it anyway. And then um, we'll be back very soon for the show. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. I miss you all terribly, and I'll see you very soon. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that video to the very end. Make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're struggling with your trading and you want my help, use the link in the description to book a free consultation today.